Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm working with a wood canvas and some gouache and I'll talk about the pros and the cons and things that I learned while I was working with this process and honestly I really loved it. There were some things that I was able to achieve and a certain level of control that I haven't been able to have before with this process so I can't wait to talk more about it. I will give a really quick disclaimer though. For some reason while I was working on this my hand and the canvas seem to slip out of camera frame every once in a while so i tried to cut them out but there are a few that still probably made it in the video so i am sorry for that when the action is happening happening off camera but let's just go ahead and jump right in with this piece and and some of the things that i learned in the process but first off it is a wood canvas which means that it doesn't have any treatment on top for being painted on. So I got some clear gesso. I wanted to make sure that it was clear because I wanted that wood grain to show through still. That's why I was painting on wood. And gesso just seals off the wood so that the paint does not sink into the wood. It just sits on top of it. And there's a lot of benefits for that, but it does just basically prepare the surface to be painted on I also found that before I applied the gesso, the wood was super, super smooth, which I don't know how exactly the gouache would have taken to that since I didn't try painting directly on it, but I have painted on super smooth paper before. And while it definitely is workable, I was excited when I put the gouache, it had this very, very fine grit to it almost. So it added a tooth without really feeling very textured. It was just enough so that while I was painting, it would catch the paint and hold it there. So I was able to to spread out thinner paint better than I have ever been able to do on paper, I think. I think it just helped where it, I don't know. I, it was the right combination. I mean, I've used this gouache on cold press as well, which is textured, but I had a hard time when I was working with it on watercolor paper, getting the right consistency because you could add water to it. And by the way, I'm using acrylic gouache, which is a little bit different than artist gouache. Artist gouache is always reactivatable with water and with the layers on top of it. And acrylic gouache is kind of a combination between gouache and acrylic paint. So it does have a certain point where it's relatively set, not completely, but a little bit more set from water. But yeah, I don't know. I just found that, that, working on this type of surface, I was able to go a lot thinner and have it still look opaque. Whereas on paper, for some reason, when I've gotten that level of consistency where it was a little bit thinner, it sometimes looked more broken apart. And I loved that because I've always struggled with being able to get it thin enough to get very controlled levels of detail when I'm working with it. So when it's really textured, well, not textured, but when it's really thick, it can be hard to spread and spread smoothly. So this was kind of a game changer. I realized how much thinner I could mix it, which I think is really the, the correct level of thinness for a nice opaque layer of gouache, but it just made the process so much less of a fight. I wasn't fighting with the gouache. It was working with me much better. And working on the wood was so liberating when you're working on paper, whether it's with gouache or watercolor or pretty much any other type of medium, there's really only so much you can do to it before it starts deteriorating and the piece gets really overworked. And with the wood, that level, that ceiling, I have not reached it yet where the wood would get overworked because it's so much more robust and it can take so many more layers. And because of that, I was not nearly as nervous about putting things down while well, that in combination with being able to use an opaque painting method. So I was able to just par start putting things down and see if it worked. And if it didn't, I knew I'd be able to cover it up and make it work with the piece. And that really actually made this all so much more enjoyable. I was able to just sit down and dive right into painting with a very basic color palette that I had in my head. And I think that it's really important for me to have a few different ways to be able to do that where watercolor is very planned ahead, at least for me, the way that I have to do it. So it's nice to get out of that, that bubble and to be able to do something that, that I enjoy and I can just work on it and get it correct the way I want in a longer process. So 
So yes, that was a huge benefit. We're working on something that was really just solid and would hold up its strength throughout the whole process was was very eye-opening how much I dislike that quality in paper. And we can talk a bit about the composition benefits that I had from working on this piece of wood. So the first one was since I was working on a square wood canvas and it's displayable as is, it doesn't need a frame beyond that to be able to be hung up on your wall. I decided that I wanted to turn it so that it was a diamond rather than a square. And that was so refreshing. It completely changed the way that the piece works with the canvas and how I needed to resolve certain compositional devices, like basically how he fits within it so that the eye would flow around the piece the way that I wanted it to. And, and those are all so enjoyable to be able to work around. I found that when I'm feeling like I'm really in a rut, even something as simple as changing the composition or not the composition, but the dimensions of the piece that I'm working on, that can freshen things up so much because it really does change the way that the contents are, are contained, how it affects the way that the viewer looks at it and sees it and interprets what's happening within it. And it's just really fun. I love it. And I love being able to work on this unusual shape for the canvas. And the other thing that it allowed me to do is because it was on wood and it has wood grain and I wanted to make sure that that was showing through and I did use clear gesso again so that I could see that wood grain. I was able to design something specifically that would show that. So the first obvious one is that I didn't paint the background. I didn't design a background for him because I wanted the wood to be the background. And I also ended up where certain areas within his his shape are also hollow. They're more of an outline suggested look to it. I, I originally, and actually all the way till the end of the recorded part of this piece, I have both his jacket and his hair like that, but I did end up going back in and completely filling in his hair. That one, because it was blue and dark for the outlines, it, it stood out in contrast too much to what the background was. I think if it was a pale blue surface, then his hair would look right. So I did end up filling that in so that his hair would have a complete blue color. But I did keep that with his jacket. And I think that the reason that that worked is because I specifically went in with the shadow color as well as the outline color that were all very warm toned and were meant to to reinforce the color of the wood as the color of his jacket. But I loved that detail. I love being able to break out of the rhythm of filling everything in with an opaque layer that that allowed me to work a little bit differently on different sections of this painting and it kept it really innovative as I was working on it or at least it felt more innovative where I was able to work differently. I also at the very end I do this smoke effect coming out of his face. It's actually very hard to see on camera because it's a very light color that's similar to the wood color as well, but it also has that almost wireframe look to it where it's not filled in so you can see through the gaps that there's wood there, but it creates the outline. And I love using that type of device in my pieces normally where I have a full, everything's painted in because usually it has to be because it's on white and I don't want it to be a plain white background. But, but because of this where it, it did have this element of design that I, already had built into the canvas. It was just really, it was really fun to be able to just go in and work on the parts that I enjoyed, which is that very thin outline effect. And if you gouache tips, the palette that I'm using, since I am using individual tubes of paint and I, I have to use them wet right out of the tube rather than how watercolor is where you can dollop it out and then dip into it. This is different again from artist gouache, which can be easily reactivated so you can have pans of them that you dip into. But for this, I had to go straight from the tube. So because of that, I had to use a different type of palette solution, but I'm using basically a glass palette, but I got it significantly cheaper than any of the ones you find at an art store because I just went to the, my thrift shop and I found a picture frame that was a pretty big size actually. And I use that. It's great because the backing is a very neutral grayish brown cardboard color. So it's kind of right in the middle, which works great because you can mix 
lighter colors and darker colors and you can see what's happening with it and it's glass i also have a glass scraper thing that has like a blade in it so i can scrape off the dried paint and then completely clear it so it's brand new and ready to take more paint and i always keep a little tiny fine mist spray bottle next to it so as i'm working i constantly spray down the paint that i'm using as well as anything that i mix together on that palette and that was one of the things that I struggled with the most when I started with gouache is that it was drying out so fast, but this helps keep it, well, basically the lifespan of what you've mixed much longer. So it's way more usable now since I can control it and I can get the use out of it and paint everything that I needed to paint with that color. And that is it for today. If you want to own the original painting, I do have a link in the description that'll take you over to my art shop. I also have another original painting that I created over on Twitch. So if you want to go check that out and see what she looks like, that's all down in that description. I have a list of the types of paints and everything that I use to create this painting down in my description as well. Also, I have links and a link specifically to Twitch where I do stream on Saturdays now. So go ahead and head over there and hang out with me while I create something live with you guys. But that is it for today, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.